This is New Cab News with Lauren Poland. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Moses, we're going to be seeing a bit of how the Pontiacs did last night. Yeah, they had right. their game four looking to wrap up against the crew. We'll have plenty of highlights coming up in sports. Looking forward to it. And Gerard, we woke up to a bit of a winter wonderland. Uh. I know not everyone <laughs> wanted it, but I'm excited to see the snow. Uh, gosh, I don't think it, yeah, everybody's happy with it. Is anybody not happy with it? The <laughs> farmers are happy. We need, we need some moisture on the deck for sure, for sure. And that's what we're getting a little bit more than what we had the day before. So it's all good. <laughs> all right, let's see what we got, what we've been dealing with anywhere from two to four centimeters right across the region. We're still holding our high temperatures from today. So that's all good. And as we look at what that uh, wind chill has been doing to us earlier on in the morning in the Battlefords. It went from a minus 12 to a minus 10 in Cold Lake and area from a minus 21 to minus 16. And in our area, similar story about a minus 19. The winds gusting a bit strongly out of the north northeast at times, anywhere from five to about 30 kilometers an hour. And we're still running anywhere from a 30 to 60 percent chance of seeing some more of it going into the overnights. But the details coming a little later in the cast. A trend that's making waves across the country. People working past retirement. For some, it's a choice. For others, it's a must. For over three decades, Brian Miklich spent his days educating youth as a school teacher. After retirement, he decided to pick up a part-time job. I just want to supplement my um, retirement income. Uh, so that I can still travel with the wife and do all sorts of things we did when I was working full time. And Brian isn't alone. A new study shows only a third of Canadians plan to be fully retired by the age of 66. We've seen a consistent trend towards people retiring a little bit later and this the phased in training has become more prevalent as well. Saskatchewan and Manitoba sit just above the national average. Close to half plan to ease their way into retirement. Most say they need the extra money. The same goes for Alberta. It's status quo with the national expected retirement age. Well over half of those surveyed plan to work part-time before calling it quits. Employment agencies say this is great news. With an overwhelming amount of jobs in our region, we need all the skilled workers we can get. It's crucial right now because that is our labor market. These individuals typically have the skills that employers are looking for. You know, they're going to be among the most committed and dedicated to the company. Brian is a week away from celebrating his 60th birthday. He plans to work until he's at least 65 and continue volunteering well after. And with the extra pocket money he's picked out from his part-time job, he's able to celebrate the big 6-0 in style. Uh, we're off to Vegas next week. so A pretty great way to spend your retirement. Students at Lloydminster Public Schools have a reason to feel a little safer walking through the halls today. William Robertson tells us why. Should touch the patient. Shock advised. Stay clear, clear of patient. Clear. Press the flash shock delivered. The school division launched its public access defibrillation program, which could potentially save a life of a cardiac arrest victim. Today we are implementing defibrillators across the Lloyd Minister Public School Division. So in every single school there will be an AED located for student use, uh, staff use and also any of the user groups that use the facilities. Staff members had the opportunity to learn how to use an AED as well as freshen up on their CPR knowledge. I think the schools have a responsibility to make sure that their students and staff are protected and you never know when something like a heart attack will happen. Um, so being prepared, having staff that are trained, and having a defibrillator on site um, can certainly improve a person's chances of survival. Treating cardiac arrest victims with CPR alone reduces the survival rate to only 5%, which is why it is crucial to learn how to use an AED, which is surprisingly easy. They're very intuitive, so they respond to basically what the user is doing every step of the way. The device, once you open it up and turn it on, is designed to prompt you through every step of the life-saving process. The defibrillators will be strategically placed in all schools because cardiac arrest can happen to anyone at any time. So the instances of the chances of cardiac arrest occurring at a school could certainly be increased just by the sheer volume of people that, that are using the schools. So it was a natural fit for to have a defibrillator in the school. 
The information sessions ensured as many people as possible receive training to start the Heart Safe School program, and it won't be long until the new equipment appears in school hallways. Cardiac arrest is a surprise at any time, but knowing what to do shouldn't have to be. Who knows, the life you save could be someone you know. William Robertson, New Cap News. A Maidstone woman accused of stealing from the local arena she volunteered at has pleaded guilty. Lori Wood appeared in court earlier this week charged with theft of checks written against the Maidstone Arena Board account. She also held the position of town administrator at the time of her arrest. Woods was sentenced to six months probation and will have to pay close to $3,000 back to the arena. Well, if you use Google services such as Gmail or YouTube, you may have noticed a change in the company's privacy policy, one that will be gathering your information and profiling you, whether you like it or not. Google has eliminated over 60 different privacy policies in favor of just one for all of its services. The move allows Google to collect user information from searches, emails, and other activities, creating a user profile of personal interests, age, gender, and even health problems. The information will be used to influence search results and advertisements, but technology yeah, experts say it's a new kind of tracking. With, uh, Google's new privacy policy is how long they're going to keep the data. To protect your privacy on Google, Bull's advice is to make sure you log out of your account so other users won't see your activity. The best way to protect yourself is, is if you don't want to use this Google new service that they're offering, don't log into Google. Although privacy advocates may be put off, Google says the new changes will help users have a better experience.